now called Doug Elkins up here to the podium as we will induct a second famous voice of Central New York and across the dirt circuit. One of the voices that we heard at Super Dirt Week each and every week and or each and every year. And I got to tell you, um, not a time goes by that I'm not thankful that I got a chance to work with Joe uh, during those last Super Dirt Weeks. And uh, it, it's left a memory with me uh, that will last forever. But right now, Doug Elkins with our next inductee. Thank you very much. Hall of Fame, huh? Cool place. I mean, look around. Look at all the names. Look at all the cars. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of accolades to make it here. And I can't think of anybody more deserving than Joe Murata. He grew up right next to the mile in Syracuse. If you looked off of turn two over that bridge that was over there, he grew up in Salve. At six years old, he could hear the cars out there. So this is something that he's always wanted to do. He grew up in that environment. He started working in 1966 at Fulton Speedway for Bub Benway. I remember he got in there and, and, and and Bub asked you, I think, can you write too? So he actually wrote the press releases and all that kind of stuff. And of course, he worked with Jack Burgess. I never heard Jack Burgess announced, but I've heard the stories. And I remember they did all these commercials on the radio back then. And, and one of the biggest things was, you know, it's summer when they're rocking in Weedsport. And that was Jack Burgess. And I remember uh, him doing that. Of course, you can't name a track in New York State that Joe Murata hasn't worked at. And most of the people in here, they specialize in one form of racing or another, usually asphalt, asphalt or dirt. Joe Murata has done them all. Canandaigua, Fulton, Rolling Wheels, um, Syracuse, all that stuff. And of course, he was there at the very first Super Dirt Week announcing there. He wasn't supposed to announce that night. We were playing Santa Claus, I think, or something like that. That was later, OK. But at the last minute, they said, hey, Joe, you're going up there. So he actually worked at Orange County for a while. There was a press conference they had. Joe was working, I believe, at Canandaigua, right? And Glenn Donnelly says, that they asked him, who's going to be the announcer at Orange County? Well, it's going to be Joe Murata. He told Joe, too, he says, it's not that far away. You just go to Binghamton. It's just past Binghamton. Obviously, it was a little further than that, but he was down there as well. He's still working today, as a matter of fact. You go out to Oswego Speedway, and you'll hear him and Roy Sova still on the mic. So all those years, a lot of you guys weren't even born in 1966, Joe Murata has been announcing that long. So for me, I was able to work with Joe in 1995. I was the new kid at Dirt after coming over from the Outlaw Circuit. And uh, any of you who've been in that tower at Weedsport know how intimidating uh, that could be. You know, another inductee right down here, right? Is right down there as well. So um, I can't think of anybody more deserving. And the nice thing is that he is still working in racing to this day. So it's an honor for me to induct Joe Murata into the New York State Stock Car Association Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you, Doug. And uh, get a few words with Joe on behalf of uh, his induction now. Oop, got me on a short leash here. Joe, before uh, I turn it over to you for your speech, just to get a few words. And uh, one thing that I just mentioned, uh, one of the memories that I'll, I'll always have. I'm not going to say it was the happiest memory, but it's a fond memory that I'll always have. We just talked about it a few moments ago. The final sign-off of the Moody Mile. When the team was put together, uh, you, Shane Andrews, Tim Baltz, myself up in the tower, that final year, that final voice that was heard over the, the grounds at the New York State Fairgrounds, the sign-off, I was sitting right behind Joe. And I had goosebumps talking about it a few moments ago, and I'll forever remember that thought, that final sign-off. Joe, I know that wasn't the happiest day in your life either, but it's one that we'll all remember forever. You got me already broken up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I remember that very, very well, and uh, it was like going to a funeral. Honest to God, it was like going to a funeral, and uh, it just ended. That was it. Well, certainly, uh, like I said, wasn't my fondest memory, but it's one I'll take to my grave, that's for sure. I know you've got a speech there. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. I got to thank the committee and everyone. What an honor. Uh, I've been inducted into a couple of other halls of fame, 
but uh, this one is really, really an honor. And standing here in this room, looking at all this dedication and all this tribute to drivers that ran here and around the state, you folks do a great, great job, fantastic job. Well, how did it get started? I'm gonna tell you a story. I've never told this story before. I remember Jack Burgess and I remember Chrissy Conamacki and I kind of always imitated them. And I always kind of wanted to be an announcer. I, I majored in radio and TV broadcasting at Syracuse University. I was a disc jockey. But um, I wanted to be a race announcer. And one day I went to Weed Sports Speedway one night and I picked up a Gator News while they were in a rain delay and it said, wanted, announcer, Fulton Speedway. Call Bob Benway, 592-7005. So I did. I called him. I said, my name is Joe Murata. I'd like to uh, apply for that position of announcer at the Speedway. He said, you ever announce before? Well, I've been known to tell tales. So I said, yeah, when I was in the Air Force, which I never was, and I was in Alaska, which I never was, I says, I announced at a small track up there in Alaska. All right, come on in Tuesday night and let me give you an interview. So I went in on that Tuesday night. He gave me a piece of paper to read. I read it. He came back in and he says, how much a night do you want? I said, what are you paying? That isn't what I asked you. I said, well, wow, <laughs> pay me something. Don't pay me at all. I got 25 bucks a night and $5 extra for doing this story. And I remember the first night I announced. The winner was Dutch Hogue in the Modifieds and Jimmy Covell in the Late Models. And I also remember making a great mistake. As they were coming out of turn four and looking for the green flag, I looked over at Chico Ryans and I said, it looks like the green is gonna be coming out. No, he stands there and gives him the finger. One more lap around. Well, from there I went from Fulton to Spencer to Lancaster Speedway. And uh, then I got my opportunity, as Doug had mentioned, down at the New York State Fairgrounds. And one of the things I remembered about the New York State Fairgrounds was a guy by the name of Wes Moody. Wes Moody turned the first 100 mile an hour lap at the mile at Syracuse. There was a guy that was a timer at Watkins Glen. I think he was 93 years old. He had a stopwatch and he kept clicking it. And I had my stopwatch and I clicked it. Now 36 seconds was 100 miles an hour, but he went a 35.9 and then a 35.8. And I says, wow, that's 100 miles an hour. And this other guy said, no it ain't. Ira Vale sitting behind me said, let the kids say it. It sounds good, 100 miles an hour. So we took a break right after that. Then we went downstairs and Dave Wright from Gator Racing News come running up to me and he says, hey, it is now the Moody Mile. Wes Moody just turned 100 miles an hour. And that's exactly how it became the Moody Mile. Then I met up with a guy by the name of Glenn Donnelly. I don't know if that was good or bad, but it was a hell of a great time uh, working for this guy, uh, Glenn Donnelly. Uh, from there, I went to uh, many different tracks with him, and like Doug had mentioned, I was happy at Canada Day, but ended up at Orange County Fair Speedway, and uh, that was uh, quite an experience going just outside of Binghamton, New York, to uh, Orange County Fair Speedway. Another one of the things I, I like to announce or talk about is Richie Evans. Now, he was an asphalt racer. We all knew him. And he, how did he get the number 61? I'm going to tell you the real truth how he got it. On an opening day at Fulton Speedway, there was a guy by the name of Iris Jack Murphy, Maynard Troyer, Dick Nephew, and a young guy by the name of Richie Evans. Well, they didn't have the electronic scoring as they have now and all of this elaboration that they have. But what they did... I says, man, we got, we got to get some, some of those sixes out of there. So I went down and I talked to Richie and I said, hey, Richie, how about putting a number one behind the six and make it much easier on those scorers? He said, that'll make you happy. I says, yeah. He said, well, it's going to cost you some bazooka bubblegum. I was a bazooka bubblegum salesman at the time. I says, okay, you got a deal. The following couple weeks later at Spencer Speedway, walking through the pit area, and uh, Richie says, hey, I don't want to tell you what he called me. Uh, come on over here, I got to show you something. 
So he made his guy take the cover off the car and it was painted number 61. He said, that's because of you. He said, it's now number 61. And that's how it became number 61. You know, Doug mentioned about the different announcers that I uh, have worked with and interviewed with and so on. And Jack Burgess and Chris Economaki certainly stand out. I have announced at races, like I said, at Orange County Fair Speedway, Charlotte. Um, worked with Doug Elkins. I worked with Roy Sova, Paul Smalls, uh, Jack Burgess, Warren Ruffner, uh, Dan Marquino, Shane Andrews, and uh, many other great announcers. And this gentleman right over here to the right of me. And I'm going to tell you, it's been quite a ride. And I'd like to close out just like this. As my good friend Jack Burgess always said, you've got to have a favorite out there. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Joe. Joe Murata, our most recent inductee. Joe going to get the uh, presentation of the plaque, the Hall of Fame jacket and hat. Uh, Brian Bedell from Boomer's Performance. Uh, joining in here, of course, our official Hall of Fame sponsors over the years have been Boomer's Performance, the Bedell family. And we want to thank them for everything they have done and continue to do here for the New York State Stock Car Association.